In this video, we're going to look at all the quirks and features of the Arc browser. Whoa. Starting from the most amateur to the most advanced. And finally, most importantly, answering the question, is it better than Chrome? Let's get started. I've been bouncing around different browsers like Edge for PDF, Safari because I don't know, it looks cool and I always come back to Chrome because of extensions. I just can't live without a few of them. But then some nice gentleman in the comments suggested that I try the Arc browser, a new way to use the internet. Sure, let's download it. Oh, it immediately offers me to block ads. Very nice. Okay, let's go with uBlock. It's time to discover new places and revisit old favorites. This browser is like Notion. They let you customize everything so you feel at home and you just can't switch to anything else. So here we are inside of the Arc browser. The first thing you'll notice is that everything is here on the left. You can easily hide this panel by clicking Command S. And most things within the Arc browser work with keyboard shortcuts. So to open a new tab, you can either click here, which is boring. You can double click here on the empty space, which is also quite boring. Or you can press Command T and it'll open this interface, which looks similar to the Alfred interface or the Spotlight Search interface face on your Mac. And essentially, this is how you open tabs within the Arc browser. There's no empty tab interface, just like in Chrome. So if you want to see a new tab open, you have to actually open something. For example, youtube.com and now a new tab will appear. Now what's interesting is that you'll see there are a bunch of sections here. This section down here is where your temporary tabs live. Essentially, new tabs that are over here will be discarded or archived after some time. That's right, in Arc you don't close tabs, you archive them, which is the same as closing them. If we go into settings with command comma and go to general, you'll see that my tabs archive after seven days, which is 12 hours by default, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to leave something important here that's going to be closed automatically, so I increased it to 7 days. Now here are your permanent tabs, which means that they don't close. So if I move YouTube over here, this will now forever be here. It's like a bookmark, but not really. If I close YouTube with Command W, you'll see that it stays here, but it's closed. Now if I open it again, it will reopen YouTube, but if I want to remove it from this permanent and interface, I have to click the minus to close it and then the X to archive it, which means you actually close it, like fully close it. So these are like bookmarks in your traditional browser. And there's a third place, which is up here, where you can drag tabs that are your favorites, basically tabs that you never close, like your email, Twitter, and for some reason this feature doesn't fully work for me, so I just ignore it. Now in other browsers, like Safari, you have what are called profiles. So this is one profile and I can switch to another profile, which are basically two separate instances of your browser, each with its own history, cookies, browser data, etc. So they're completely separate. It's like using your browser on a different computer. What Arc has going for it is spaces within the same window. But before we get to that, I want to mention this video's sponsor, which is Ugreen and their new Nexode 300 watt fast charger. It's a thick boy and has five different ports, one of which has a 140 watt output. This one port is as powerful as two of my MacBook Pro chargers and 28 of these 5 watt chargers. It's able to charge a 16 inch MacBook Pro from 0 to 56% in 30 minutes. Also, you can use all of the holes, that's what she said, to power up to five things at the same time. There are holes for all your friends. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, escalating. There's also a thermal guard system inside that keeps things protected from overheating, overcharge and excessive current. Pretty nice. Check out Ugreen's 300 watt charger in the description. Now back to the Arc browser. What Arc has going for it is spaces within the same window. So if I swipe on my trackpad like this to the left, I will switch to a different space. This means that if you have a space for work and a space for doing whatever you want, it's super easy to switch to it as soon as you feel like you want to procrastinate. That's why I have a space in the middle called the empty space 
use, which lets me rethink my life decisions and breathe a little before I switch to my procrastination space. Now, as I've mentioned before, this browser really likes keyboard shortcuts. For example, Command T to open a new tab, Command W to close a tab. There's also one really cool feature, which is if you press Command Shift 2, it will let you take a screenshot of a select part of the page. And it very nicely snaps with different elements on the web page. So if I take a screenshot here, I'll be able to save it to my library, copy or send via iMessage. But you can also edit the screenshot, which includes arrows and stuff and even changes your mouse cursor theme, which matches the browser theme. That's right. This browser has themes that you can customize. When I switch between my spaces, the theme of the browser also switches. Here in the empty space, I just have a gray theme. You can right click on the empty space and choose theme to customize your theme. And here is where the fun part of this browser begins. You can choose between different colors and increase their intensity for your browser to become a lobster. You can also increase or decrease the grain amount. Now the browser looks like sandpaper and here it looks like wet wipes. I like to keep it somewhere in the middle. You can also choose between light appearance, dark appearance or your default computer appearance. And the aesthetics of this browser is what really makes me want to use it a lot more compared to something like Microsoft Edge. If I open Microsoft Edge and compare it to Arc, just look at how much more beautiful Arc is. That's why I want to use it more. You can change everything here, like your icons for different spaces and customize your theme however you want. I can add multiple colors like this and spin them around to find the color theme that I want. What's also cool is that the folder icons are also changing color. So the design of this browser is really what makes it stand out. It makes me want to use it to do work. Also, if you go into settings, they give you a personalized card for installing the browser. Ooh, ooh. I could do this all day. Oh, you can also change your card and it's nicely animated. Let's go back to the keyboard shortcuts. If you press Ctrl N, it will create a new note and a new note is exactly what it is. And here you can just type anything. Also, notes are private by default, but if you click this share icon, you can choose anyone can view and then copy the link. And if I go into my other browser and paste the link, I will be able to see the note here, which means that you can easily share different notes with your friends. They open just like a separate web page, which is very nice. Now I can move this note here and then close it and swipe left once more where you can see all the notes that I've created. You can of course delete notes or you can click enter and it will open. Now sometimes opening your notes doesn't work either by double clicking or pressing enter. It really depends on how the browser is feeling so you might not be able to access your notes ever again. This is just a bug that I hope they will fix. If I have a bunch of tabs down here and also you can hold shift and select multiple tabs and move them between these separate spaces, I can click command shift K, which will close all of the tabs in the temporary shelf. If I'm fast enough, I can hit command Z and it will reopen all of them. Now, if you miss the time window where you can press command Z to undo, you can press command shift T, which will reopen your most recently closed tabs. You can also do this in every single browser, not just Arc. What's also really cool is the tab switcher. On other browsers, you can press control tab to go forward in your tabs and control shift tab to go backwards. But this browser, I think Firefox does this as well, but I'm not sure, gives you this nice command tab interface to switch your tabs. So if you're lost among all of your tabs, you can press control tab and just switch to the one that you want. It works just like the command tab switcher on your Mac. What got me quite confused at first is when I open a folder and then open a tab within that folder and then try to close the folder, the tab just stays here. I thought, why is this tab not collapsing with the other tabs? Turns out it's because this tab is actually open and everything else inside the folder is closed. So if I want to collapse this tab as well, I have to click the minus icon or command W to close it and then it just goes inside of the folder because this shelf here here is your permanent tabs. So when you close them, instead of disappearing, they still stay here for you to open them next time. It's just like bookmarks. Now, because in the Arc browser, you open a new tab with command T and it actually doesn't create a blank tab, that means that you 
can't create a blank tab, which is quite annoying because in my other browsers, I like to have a new tab that's pinned so that I open into a nice clean interface instead of being thrown into one of these thousands of tabs that I have open. But I found a workaround. You can press command T and then type in about colon blank, which will create a blank page and then you can drag it up here and essentially this acts just like a blank tab. So whenever I want a clean interface, I just switch to my blank tab and then close the browser and the next time I open it again, it doesn't throw me into one of these tabs but rather opens a blank page. You can also do this by switching to a space that's empty but I prefer it this way. What's also cool is that you can multitask within the browser. If you open a new tab, for example YouTube, you can drag one tab on top of another to enter this multitasking interface. It basically tiles two tabs next to each other. You can then hide the sidebar and just watch a video and take notes about that video here, which essentially allows for multitasking heaven. If you have more browsers open or more other apps open, you can multitask within Mac OS and then multitask within your browser, which is probably not the best idea. If you want to close either one of these tabs, you can highlight them and you'll notice this thin border around it and then press command W to close it. If you didn't mean to close it, you can press command Z to reopen it in this tab view, which is very nice. These tabs also act like just one separate tab that you can move into either one of your folders or anywhere else that you want. Now the way you find the link for your tab is right here at the top. You can just click here and copy the link. I also mentioned that you can customize everything in your browser and that includes websites. You can come up here to the URL and click this icon and then this paintbrush, which will open up my boost, which essentially means a panel where you can customize your website. Here you can change the default font of your website. You can also pick the default size for this website and every time you open it, it will open in this new size. You can make all letters within that website be capital or just don't have capital letters, you know. Now if I click on zap, it essentially acts like ad block and lets me remove elements from this page. So if I wanted to remove my banner, I can click on it and then press zap this and it didn't do anything. So it doesn't always work. So if I zap the home here, you'll see that it disappears. There it is. It can essentially hide elements on the web page just like Adblock. Now the best thing here is this lamp icon which changes the theme of your entire website. So you can turn any website to be any color that you want. You can also customize the contrast, the brightness and the saturation of these colors here. And if you've done something that you don't like, you can click this here which will reset everything. Now if you're a productivity master, you probably open new tabs with Spotlight Search or Alfred. What's cool is that if you make the arg browser, your default browser, and search for a tab through Alfred and you click open, it will open in this mini browser, which is not the full ARC browser, but just a little mini browser on top of it. Of course, you can press command O and it will open in the actual browser, but if you want to search for something quickly without getting distracted by your other tabs, you can just do it through Alfred and view it in this mini browser without having to see 5,000 other tabs that you left open, which is very nice. You can also choose to open this tab in one of your spaces. So if I click empty space, it now opened within my empty space, which is very nice. All other default shortcuts like the triple click to close a tab also work in this browser. So if you move to it, you essentially lose nothing if you're coming from Chrome or Firefox. I also discovered that you can access extensions with keyboard shortcuts on Chromium browsers. If I press command shift U, it will toggle the unhook extension which also opens inside of a separate window instead of right here and I can quickly toggle things within my extensions by just using keyboard shortcuts. Now after a few days of using it, my brain automatically just kept going back to Chrome in my dock and I had to just remove it to keep using this browser. I'm really not used to tabs being vertical like this and if I open a link in a new browser, my brain just automatically searches for it right here. So that's something that I had to get used to. There also were a few annoying 
some bugs that I encountered, which made me briefly switch back to Chrome. But then I realized that it's just my brain defaulting to old ways of doing things, so I switched back. I decided not to give in to my brain's old habits and try to look at it like a completely new thing that I'm using, not something old that I'm switching from. And this new mindset really helped me switch to this browser, which wasn't that hard in the first place. Maybe it's placebo, I haven't done any benchmarks for it, but it feels a lot more snappier and just faster than Chrome. Maybe because I don't have 3 billion tabs open yet, but still, it feels very snappy, except in Google Docs. Google Docs just keep weirdly crashing and reloading when I'm writing in them. So that's one thing to keep in mind. I'm still a complete rookie and I haven't tried most of the features, but from an average user's perspective, it's a really nice browser that makes me want to use it. So will I be using it moving forward? So far with this browser, I haven't found anything that annoys me, mostly because it's Chromium based, which means that all of my extensions still work and it looks better than other browsers. So I don't see a reason to stop using it. I hope this was useful to someone else there and I'll see you in the next one.